fourth grade students. All right, so for today's math lesson, there's a few things you're going to need. You're going to need your fourth grade math notebook. You're going to need uh, this paper, which was in your orange math folder in your desk, um, and it is front and back. So you're going to need these two things as well as a pencil. Um, and I want to go ahead and let you know that this is going to be a long video. Okay, this is going to be a long math lesson. Uh, so buckle in, sit tight, pay attention, uh, because this is a big deal. Okay, we are starting division today and I'm going to show you how we can divide big numbers. First, we're just going to kind of go over what division is and just kind of review some stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a very important lesson. You've got to focus. Okay, this is a big deal. This is not something that you can just kind of, you know, not pay attention to and then expect to be able to do it this afternoon. You're going to have to focus. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and start here with this paper. Uh, so let's talk about what division is. Uh, so division, that's when you have a total, like a number that represents the total amount of something, and you're going to break it down into equal sized groups, okay? So maybe division would be something like I've got 20 popsicles, and I want to share them equally with my four friends. How many popsicles will each of those friends get? So if I have 20 popsicles, then that's my total. And I'm going to break that total into four groups for my four friends. So I'm basically giving each of those friends a popsicle until I don't have any popsicles left over to give them. So then, you know, our division problem would be our total of 20 divided by four equals how many popsicles each friend got. And that would be five popsicles. So 20 divided by four equals five. Okay. Now in that scenario, it divided out evenly, you know, where each friend is going to get five popsicles and then I'm not going to have any popsicles left over. Well, sometimes, you know, we might have a scenario where I do have popsicles left over. Like if I say I have 21 popsicles and I want to share them with four friends. Well, each friend is going to get five popsicles, but then I'm going to have one popsicle left over. And I don't want to give that one popsicle to one of my friends because then that person ends up with six popsicles, whereas everybody else still only has five popsicles. And that wouldn't be fair, right? That, that wouldn't be equal groups. Your friend might get mad at you, you know, if something like that happens. Um, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today is division where, you know, you can take your total and split it into equal groups, or maybe you split it into equal groups, but then you have something left over. So we're going to start with visual division. I want you to be able to actually see what division looks like. Okay, so let's start with number one right here. And I'm going to do this whole thing with you. And you need your pencil because you're going to be doing it with me. Okay, so number one here says, there are 27 shapes below. So we've got our 27 music symbols here. How many groups of five can you make with them? How many will you have left over? So 27 is our total. That's how many objects we have right here. That's how many shapes we have. So that is our total. So we're going to label this for T as our total. 27 is our total. We want to put them into groups of five. So that means I'm going to circle a group of five symbols. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, and I wanted to count again just to be sure. And I have right here one group of five. So one group, that's what's circled. And inside that group, I have five shapes. So that is one group of five. However, you see here that I have plenty of shapes left. I can actually make another group of five. So I'm going to make another group of five. One, two, three, four, five. So now I have two groups of five. But look at how many shapes I still have left over. I have plenty of shapes here to make another group of five. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and as you can see, I still have more shapes here. I can make another group of five. I can make another group of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then look what happens here. Now I've made some groups of five. I only have two shapes left. If I only have two shapes left, I cannot make another group of five. 
those shapes are left over. Guys, this is what division is. We just did division. So we took our total number of shapes, which was 27. We broke it down into groups of five. So we want to know how many groups did we make. So let's count them up. We made one, two, three, four, five. We made five groups. So that's our answer here to question 1A. And then the other part of our question is how many were left over. So we had two shapes left over. So two shapes left over. So if we were actually to express this as a division problem, here's what it would look like. And write this with me. We're going to take our total, which is 27. We divided it into groups of five. So that's 27 divided by five. How many groups did we make? We made five groups. And then how many shapes were left over? We had two shapes left over. That's called a remainder. R for remainder. So when you have some shapes left over because we cannot make another group here, we didn't have enough shapes to do that, that's called a remainder. The word remainder means what is left over. And it's kind of like, you know, if I were to give you a real life example of this, if we're taking a math test and I say you have five minutes remaining, that means you have five minutes left to work on the test. That's what a remainder is. So what this means is that if I do 27 divided by five, I could make five groups, but then I had two shapes left over that could not go into a group. So those two shapes are just, they're on their own. They're left over. Those two shapes are remaining. Okay. All right. So let's keep going here. All right. So number two, it says there are 26 shapes below. So that's our total. That's our total number of shapes here. How many groups of four can you make? So this time we're going to make groups of four, and we want to know how many will be left over. So let's make groups of four here. So one, two, three, four. 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 So there's some groups there, and then I have some circles down here at the bottom. I can make another group of four. One, two, three, four. Okay? And then as you can see, I cannot make another group of four. So we just keep circling groups of four until we realize that we don't have enough circles left to make another group of four. All right, so how many groups did we make? We made one, two, three, four, five, six. We made six groups. So that's the answer to 2A right here. We made six groups. And then look how many shapes were left over. We had two shapes left over. So that's our next answer to 2B, six shapes left over. So now if we were to write this as a division problem, what would that division problem be? Well, we took our total, which was 26 shapes altogether. We split that equally, or you could say divided that equally into groups of four, so that's 26 divided by 4. How many groups did we make? We made 6 groups. And how many shapes were left over? We had 2 shapes left over. So that's 26 divided by 4 equals 6 remainder 2. 6 remainder 2. Okay? All right, so let's keep going here. Number 3, it says there are 23 shapes below. How many groups of 9 can you make with them? How many will you have left over? All right, so 23 shapes below, that's going to be our total. So T for total. And this time, we're going to make groups of 9. So we're going to circle groups of 9. So I'm going to count out 9 stars. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here's a group of nine right here, okay? And then let's keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is going to kind of be a funky looking group there, but it's still a group of nine. And then do we have enough stars here to make another group of nine? One, two, three, four, five. No, we do not, okay? So this is what our visual division is going to look like, okay? All right, so how many groups were we able to make? We've got two groups here. So that's the answer to question 3A. And then how many shapes were left over? One, two, three, four, five. We had 
five shapes left over. So that's 3B. Okay. All right. So now if we were to write this as a division problem, what would that look like? Well, it would look like our total, which was 23 shapes in all, divided into groups of nine, which gave us two groups with a remainder of five shapes. So that would be 23 divided by nine equals two remainder five. So we had 23 shapes. We broke them up into groups of nine. Okay, we were able to make two groups of nine, but we had five shapes left over that could not fit into a group of nine because there weren't enough shapes here to make a group of nine. We only had five shapes. We needed nine shapes. So we would just call that a remainder of five. All right, let's look at number four here. Number four, there are 28 shapes below. How many groups of two can you make? Ooh, that's going to be a big number, right? Because if we have a large number of shapes here and we're only putting them in groups of two, that's a small group. So that means we're going to have a bunch of groups. So how many groups of two and how many will we have left over? All right, so 28 shapes, that's our total. So T for total, that's how many shapes we have in all. We're going to make groups of two and let's go ahead and do that. All right, so group of two, two, I'm just going to keep going here. Ooh, look at that. Interesting, huh? All right, so circle your groups of two. All right, so let's answer the first question. How many groups of two were we able to make? So let's count up the groups that we made. We made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. We made 14 groups. So that's going to be the answer to question 4A. We made 14 groups. Now look, how many shapes were left over? How many shapes do you see here that are not in a group? Well, that would be zero, right? We actually, in question number four here, we actually don't have any shapes left over. So the answer is zero. So what does that tell us? That tells us that since we didn't have any shapes left over, there is not going to be a remainder. Not all division problems have remainders. Some do and some don't. This one does not. So when we write our division problem, we had 28 shapes in all. We divided them into groups of two and we made 14 groups no remainder. If there's not a remainder, then you don't need to put the letter R there. We don't need to write 14 R zero. If you don't write the letter R, then we are to assume that there was not a remainder. And here, there is not a remainder. 28 divided by two is 14. So that means when you count by twos, you will say the number 28. And you're going to have to count by twos 14 times before you say the number 28. So really here, we would say that two divides into the number 28 evenly. Whereas like the one above it right here, 26 divided by four, four did not divide into 26 evenly. So that's why we had that remainder, okay? All right, so let's keep going here. All right, number five, there are 14 shapes below. So that's our total. How many groups of four can you make? How many will be left over? So we're going to make groups of four here. So there's four. There's four more. And then one, two, three, four. There's four more. All right, so how many groups could we make? We just made three groups. So the answer to question 5A is three. And then, <coughs> excuse me, how many shapes were left over? We have two shapes that were left over. So if we write this as a division problem, that would be our total number of shapes, which is 14, divided that into groups of four, and how many groups did we make? We made three groups with two shapes left over. So that's three remainder two. Three remainder two. All right, let's keep going here. We got a few more. All right, number six. There are 18 shapes below. That is our total. So T for total. How many groups of five can you make with them? How many will be left over? So this time we're going to split our total up into equal groups of five. So one, two, three, four, five. Circle. One, two, three, four, five. Circle. One, two, three, four, five. 
circle and one, two, three, so not enough to make another group. All right, so look right here. How many groups did we make? We just made three groups. So the answer to number 6A is three. And then right here, how many shapes do we have left over? That is three. So the answer to 6B is three. So then if we were to express this as a division problem, that would be our total, which was 18 divided into groups of five. And that gave us three groups with the remainder of three shapes left over. So that's 18 divided by five equals three remainder three. All right, number seven, we have 27 shapes below. So that's our total, Oops, sorry. Uh, how many groups of six can we make? How many will be left over? So this time we're gonna make groups of six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, all right, so I made my groups of six there. Okay, so make your groups of six as well. All right, so for number seven here, how many groups of six did we make? We made one, two, three, four. We made four groups of six. So the answer to 7A is four. And then how many shapes were left over? Here's one, two, three. We had three shapes left over. So 7B is three. And then if we write this as a division problem, that would be our total which was 27 shapes divided by groups of six, and that equals four groups with a remainder of three shapes left over. So 27 divided by six equals four remainder three. All right, let's look at number eight here. There are 18 shapes below, so that's our total. How many groups of three can we make and how many will be left over? So groups of three. Three, three, and then, oh, I got a funky looking group here. Three, there we go. So that last one right here that I'm tracing again, that was kind of a, a funky looking group, but it's all right. It's still a group of three. Never said the shapes have to be side by side. All right, so how many groups did we make? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we just made six groups. So the answer to 8A is six. And then look, how many shapes were left over? We didn't have any shapes left over, right? So that would be zero for 8B. We did not have any shapes left over. So that tells us there is not a remainder because we didn't have any shapes left over. So if we write this as a division problem, that would be our total, which was 18, divided into groups of three, and that just equals six. 18 divided by three equals six. When you count by threes, you will say the number 18. 18 is a multiple of three. So that means that we're not gonna have a remainder here. Now, if this was like the number 19 or 20 instead of 18, then yeah, we would have a remainder. But since 18 is a multiple of three, then we're not gonna have a remainder. All right, and then last but not least, number nine. We have 14 shapes below, so that's our total. How many groups of three can we make and how many shapes will be left over? So groups of three. There's three, there's three, and then I have one, two, and I don't have enough shapes to make another group of three. All right, so how many groups did we just make? One, two, three, four. So the answer to 9A is four. And then look how many shapes were left over. One, two, we had two shapes left over. So if we were to write this as a division problem, that would be our total, which is 14, divided by groups of three, and that gave us four groups with a remainder of two shapes left over. So that's 14 divided by three, which equals four remainder two. All right, so that is visual division. That's division that we can actually see by looking at the total number of shapes and making our groups and seeing what's left over. Uh, let's flip over to the back side here and let's see what happens whenever we can't actually see the shapes, okay? So we're probably not gonna do all 20 of these, but we are gonna do several of them. All right, so look at number one here. We are preparing to learn how to do some pretty big division problems like what we're gonna do in today's lesson, okay? All right, so number one, Here's what we're gonna do. Nine times blank 
is as close to 58 as you can get without going over, okay? So since we don't want to go over the number 58, that means that 58 is our total, and we're counting by 9 to get as close to 58 as we can, and we don't want to go over 58. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to count by nines and try to get close to 58. So count with me here. So we're going to do 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54. If I add another 9 to 54, I'm going to go over 58. So I can only count by 9 six times. So we would say here that 9 times 6 is as close as we can get to the number 58 without going over. And that's because, and we're going to write this off to the side here, 9 times 6 equals 54. Okay, equals 54. And then how many numbers are there between 54 and 58? So 54, 55. 56, 57, 58. So if we were doing a division problem, we would have a remainder of four here, okay? All right, so let's do number two. Five times blank is as close to 54 as you can get without going over. Well, we should already know our fives multiplication facts, right? So let's see, five times nine is 45. Well, we can get a little bit closer to 54. Uh, five times 10, is 50 and then 5 times 11 is 55. So if we do 5 times 11, we just went over our total of 54. So instead, we're going to do 5 times 10. 5 times 10 because we know that 5 times 10 is 50. Okay. So if you can already kind of start to do this, this is going to help you a lot whenever I show you how to do some pretty big division problems here in a minute. Okay. Yeah, this is basically what you're going to have to do. All right, so number three, four times blank is as close to 38 as you can get. So if you already know your fours multiplication facts, then you already know the answer. If you don't know your fours, then you're going to have to count by fours. So you're going to have to count 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. So that would be four times, well, can we get even closer than that? 32, and actually, yeah, we can. We would go to 36, right? Because 4 times 9 is 36. So this would be 4 times 9, which equals 36, okay? So if you haven't already figured it out yet, in order for you to divide, you do need to know your multiplication facts. Guys, I can't stress this enough. Study those multiplication facts. Okay. All right. Let's look at number four here. Uh, so eight times blank is as close to 64 as you can get without going over. Okay. Well, we know that eight times eight is 64 and we're trying to get close to 65. So we would say eight times eight equals 64. That's as close as we can get to the number 65 when we're counting by eights without going over 65. Look at number five here. Four times blank is as close to 15 as you can get without going over. So four times what number is going to get you close to 15? Four times three, right? Because four times three is 12. If you do four times four, that's 16, and you just went over 15. So four times three is as close as you can get to 15. Number six. Two times blank is as close to 17 as you can get without going over. So two times what number is going to get you close to 17? Well, let's see. Two times eight is 16. Two times nine is 18. So that would be two times eight. Two times eight is 16. That's as close as we can get to 17. Okay. All right. Let's go all the way down to at least number 10 here. We'll go down to number 10. All right, so number seven, six times blank is as close to 38 as you can get without going over. So six times what number is going to get you close to 38? Well, that would be six, right? Six times six is 36. So six times six is as close as you can get to 38. Uh, number eight, 10 times what number is as close to 104 as you can get without going over? 
So what number can we multiply by 10 and get really close to 104? Well, we know that 10 times 10 is 100. So 10 times 10 is as close as we can get. All right, let's do a couple more. Number nine, four times what number is as close to 14 as you can get without going over? So that would be what? Four, eight, 12. That would be three. Four times three is 12. That's as close as we can get. And then number 10, uh, seven times blank is as close to 17 as you can get without going over. So seven times what number? 7, 14, 21, it would have to be 14, right? So that would be 7 times 2, which equals 14. So 7 times 2 is as close to 17 as we can get without going over, okay? So, Ms. Turner, how is this going to help me when I am dividing with some pretty big numbers? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about now, okay? Uh, so just take this paper put it off to the side. What you need to do now is go to your math notebook, okay? And we're going to have quite a bit of notes that we need to put in here, okay? All right, so go to your math notebook. Go ahead and open up to the next clean page that you have. And today, we are going to talk about how to divide with some bigger numbers. So you already know how to multiply, right, with big numbers. We use a strategy called partial products. So, you know, we break down our factors that we're multiplying into expanded form and then we end up getting parts of the product and then we add all those parts together. Well you'll actually see here that the way I'm going to show you today how to divide with some big numbers is actually very similar to that but we call this strategy partial quotients. And why do we call it partial quotient? Well, the quotient is what we call the answer to a division problem. And we're going to use a strategy here that will show us part of the quotient. And we'll put all those parts together so that we have the final quotient. All right. So up here at the top of your notebook page, this is division. And the strategy that I'm going to show you is called partial quotients. Partial quotients, okay? And just like whenever I showed you, you know, how to do multiplication with partial products and we gave it a nickname, we call it the box method. We also have a nickname for this strategy as well. Uh, so when you're dividing and you're using this strategy called partial quotients, we do have a nickname for it. Sometimes we call it the big seven the big seven, and you'll see why we call it that very, very soon. All right, so before we actually start learning how to divide, let's kind of go over some important words that you need to know when we are dividing. Uh, so let's start with just a very basic division problem. So write this with me. We're going to write 63 and kind of stretch this out, leave some room here, divided by 9 equals 7. So let's start with just a very simple division problem like this one. There's not even a remainder here, right? 63 divided by 9 equals 7. So here's some words you need to know. 63, which is the first number of our division problem, it has a name. It's called the dividend. It's called the dividend. Okay, and this is also going to be your total. So just like, you know, earlier when we were doing the division where we had those shapes and we knew how many shapes we had and we put them into groups, we knew the total number of shapes. So that was the first number of our division problem. And that first number is called the dividend. OK, the second number here, which in this case is the nine. This is called the divisor. This is called the divisor. And whenever we're dividing, we're basically just asking ourselves, how many times is this 9 going to go into that 63? How many times can I count by 9 to try to get to that total? So we're just counting by 9s until we get to 63. And in this case, you'll count by the number 9 seven times before you say 63. So seven is the answer to this division problem. The answer to a division problem is called the quotient. We call that the quotient. And that's the reason why the name of our division strategy is called partial quotients. 
because the quotient is the answer to a division problem, okay? Now, here's a way that we can write a division problem, but in fourth grade, we're going to be dividing with some numbers that are very big, and you're not just going to be able to skip count by nines and get the answer. And you're not just going to be able to skip count by three or five to get the answer because our numbers are going to get really big. Like this is going to turn into, you know, 547 divided by six. OK, those are the types of problems that we're going to look at solving. So there's actually another way that we need to know how to write division problems. So write this with me. Here's another way that we can write division problems. We write division problems like this. Okay, so we write division problems like this. You ready? Because I'm going to show you how to do this now. Okay, skip down a couple lines. And here we go. So stay with me. Skip down a couple of lines. So we're first going to go ahead and get it set up. So we're going to have a little curved line like this. It almost looks like a like a inside out parenthesis or something like that. OK, then we're going to have a line going straight across. And for right now, we're just going to leave it like that. OK, now our divisor, which in 63 divided by 9 equals 7, our divisor goes on the outside. Okay, goes on the outside. Our dividend, which in that example, our total was 63, goes on the inside. And then our quotient, which was our answer to the division problem, goes on top. So when you read this, even though the 9 is probably the first number that your eyes come to, we actually read this as 63 divided by 9 equals 7. So again, we're wanting to know how many times will this 9 go into 63? Well, 9 will go into 63 7 times. So that's your answer. That is your quotient. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to start showing you how we can use our partial quotients division strategy to start dividing with some big numbers. Now I will start off with some pretty small numbers so that way you can kind of see how the strategy works and then we'll work our way up into some bigger numbers. Okay. All right. So let's start practicing here. Here is example number one. And for number one here, we're going to do 47 divided by five. And we want to know what that is equal to. So I'm sure that's one that some of you can do in your head, but that's not the point. I want you to see the strategy here. So if we're given 47 divided by 5, first we need to set this up correctly. So we're going to skip down a couple lines, and we're going to set it up like this. Our 5 goes on the outside. Our 47 goes on the inside. Now remember, our partial quotient strategy has a nickname. It's called the big seven. And here's the reason why. Look at what my pencil's about to do because you're gonna do this with me. See where I'm at right here? Start here, I want you to go down. Just like this. And it actually does look like the number seven. See, it kinda looks like the number seven here. So this is why we call it the big seven. Now to do 47 divided by five, we wanna know how many times will five go into 47? Well, I already know that there's gonna be a remainder because 47 is not a multiple of five. 47 is not a number that we say when we count by fives. But what we're gonna do here to figure out our prod or our um, quotient, I'm sorry, to figure out our quotient, we're actually gonna use multiplication. We're going to break down this 47 as small as we possibly can using multiplication problems, starting with the number 5. So I know like I can do 5 times what number to get close to 47. This is why we did this activity here, because it's all about trying to get close to that total, right? So 5 times what number will get me close to 47? Well, 5 times 9 will get me close to 47. So here on the next line, I'm going to write 5 times 9. 5 times 9. Well, what's 5 times 9? 5 times 9 is 45. Okay, and when you're dividing, you're taking your total and you're breaking it down into smaller groups. So we're going to subtract 
47 minus 45 and see what we have left over. Well, what we have left over is 2 because 47 minus 45 is 2. Now, I have 2 left over. Will 5 go into the number 2? Is there anything I can do where I can count by 5s or multiply by 5 to get to 2? No, because even 5 times 1 is 5, which is bigger than 2. So since this number is smaller than my divisor, I'm done. I'm actually done with this problem here. So to get that 45, we had to multiply by 9. This right here, this is your partial quotient. This is your partial quotient. So we're going to take our partial quotient, and we're going to start to write it as our answer. So that's 9. And then what did we have left over? This is what you have left over. So this 2 here, write this with me. This is your remainder. This is what you have left over. Okay? So we would have a remainder of 2. So if we were going back to doing our visual division, we would have 47 shapes. And if we were making groups of 5, we would be able to make nine groups of five, but we would have two shapes left over. So for 47 divided by five, we get nine remainder two. So we have to know our multiplication facts, and then of course we have to be able to subtract. So we're using multiples of five to break down our total until we get a remainder, or maybe we just break down our total evenly, and then we don't even have a remainder, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the page here, and we're gonna do several practice problems um, just like this one, okay? All righty, sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties here. All right, so let's look at several more problems here. So I'm gonna flip over because I'm out of room. All right, so let's start with number two here. All right, so our second example, number two, uh, let's do 32 divided by three. 32 divided by three, okay? Let's go ahead and set that up. So skip down a couple of lines here, give yourself some room to work. Uh, so remember, the three is going to go on the outside, the 32 is going to go on the inside. That's your dividend, also like your total. And then we want to make our big seven here. Okay, so it actually does look like the number seven. All right, so to figure out the quotient, to figure out the answer to 32 divided by three, we're going to use multiples of three to break down this number 32. So we're basically just asking ourselves, what number times three is going to get us close to 32? So three times what number is going to get you close to 32? Well, that would be 3 times 10, right? Because 3 times 10 is 30. So we're going to subtract 30 from 32 and see what we've got left over here. So 32 minus 30 is 2. So now we ask ourselves, well, what number times 3, again, is going to get us close to the number 2? Well, nothing, right? Because 2 is smaller than 3, so then we're done here. So this 10, that is your partial quotient. So we're going to plug this in where our quotient goes. And then this 2, that's your remainder. That, that's what's left over because that number is smaller than the number that we were dividing by. So there's nothing that we can do with it. So that's our remainder. So that's 10 remainder 2. 10 remainder 2. Okay? You getting it so far? Let's keep going here. All right, so this is going to be number three. Um, and let's do 61 divided by nine. 61 divided by nine, okay? So skip down a couple lines. Go ahead and get this set up here in your notebook. And I will tell you, whenever we get back from Thanksgiving break, this is your homework, okay? You're going to have homework on this division strategy. So you're going to be glad you have all these problems in your notebook, okay? So we make our big seven here. We put our dividend or our total on the inside. So we want to know how many times will nine go into the number 61? How many times can I count by nine and get as close to 61 as I possibly can? So we're going to break down this total, 61, using multiples of nine. So 9 times what number is going to get you close to 61? So let's see. When we count by 9s, we've got 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 
54, and then we say 63, right? So since 9 times 7 is 63, that's too big. We need to back it up a little bit, and we'll do 9 times 6. 9 times 6 is 54, so we'll subtract 54 from our total of 61, and we'll see what we've got left over here. Well, 61 minus 54 is 7. So then we want to know how many times can we count by 9 to get to the number 7? Well, we can't, right? Because 7 is smaller than 9, so that means we're done. So this 6 here, this is your partial quotient. And actually, in this case, it is your quotient, okay? And then 7 is our remainder. 7 is what we had left over. So that gives us the answer, 6 remainder 7, okay? So this 9 here, this is never going to be part of your answer. See where I'm pointing to this 9? That's the number that you're multiplying by. That's the number that we, you know, pulled from our division problem here. The number you actually multiplied by 9, which was like the 6 right here, that's where your partial quotient comes from. That's a mistake that a lot of kids make, okay? All right, so let's do number 4. All right, so number 4 here, let's do 96 divided by 2. Now, if you know anything about the multiples of two, the numbers you say when you count by twos, then you already know what's going to happen here. 96, that's an even number. Well, when you count by twos, you only say even numbers. So that means two should go evenly into 96, meaning that we should not have a remainder here. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this problem up. So two, big seven. 96. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So 2 times what number is going to get us really close to 96? All right. So this is where your multiplication problems over here, where you're multiplying something by 2 so that we can break down 96, they're going to start to get a lot bigger because I don't know about you, but I don't know off the top of my head what number to multiply by 2 to get 96. So instead, I'm going to use some multiplication facts that I do already know easily in my head and try to get to 96. Like I know 2 times 40 off the top of my head, and you should as well. So I'm going to do 2 times 40. Now is 2 times 40 going to be 96? No, but it's going to get me close to 96. And then I'm going to subtract and I'm going to have a much smaller number to work with now. So it'll get easier and easier and easier to solve this problem. So we're going to do 2 times 40, which is 80. So I subtract 80. 96 minus 80 is 16. And see, now I do know 2 times what number gives me 16. That's 2 times 8. So I'm going to do 2 times 8 because that's 16. Subtract 16, 16 minus 16 is zero. So since I could do 16 minus 16 and get zero, I'm not going to have a remainder. Now, what do we do over here to figure out our answer? Because all the other problems so far, you've only had one number here. But this time, to get to 96, we had to do 2 times 40, and we had to do 2 times 8. 40 and 8 are your partial quotients. To get the final quotient, we have to do 40 plus 8. We have to combine them. Well, 40 plus 8 is 48. So that means 96 divided by 2 is 48, okay? And a lot of the problems that we're going to do moving forward are going to be very similar to this one, okay? All right, so let's keep going here. Number 5. Don't be afraid to use some pages here in your notebook. It's all right. We're going to go through several pages together. All right, so number 5, we're going to do 20 divided by 8. 20 divided by 8. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that up. So skip down a couple of lines. 8, big 7, and then the number 20. Now this one's a little bit easier, I think, because eight's a pretty big number and it's going into a small number. All right, so we want to know how many times will 8 go into 20? How many times? So what number can we multiply by 8 to get close to 20? Well, that would definitely have to be 8 times 2. And 8 times 2 is 16. So we're going to subtract 16 from 20 and see what we've got left over. Well, what we've got left over 
is the number four. And then will eight go into the number four? No, four is way too small. So we're done. So this is your quotient. We're going to plug it in right here. So that would be two. And then we have a remainder of four. So 20 divided by eight is two remainder four. That was an easy one, right? Let's get a harder one up in here. All right, so let's do number six now. This is going to be 40 divided by six. 40 divided by six. Okay, let's go ahead and set that up. So skip down a couple lines. Six, draw your big seven, and then 40. All right, so we want to know how many times will six go in to 40. So six times what number will get me close to 40? Um, so I'm thinking six times five. That's a pretty good one. Let's do six times five. That's a pretty easy fact. And the whole point of this over here when we're multiplying, guys, keep it easy. If you're sitting there having to count on your fingers and you're trying to do six times 13 or six times 14, that's not easy. Make it easy facts that you pretty much already know, like six times five. Six times five is 30. So I'm going to do 40 minus 30, which equals 10. So now, how many times will 6 go into 10? Since 10 is a bigger number, I can break this down a little bit smaller using those multiples of 6. Like, for example, I can do 6 times 1. 6 times 1 is 6, so I subtract 6 from 10, and that leaves me with 4. Now, 6 will no longer go into 4. I can't break down the number 4 anymore using multiples of 6 because 4 is too small. So these are my partial quotients, 5 and 1. So to get the full quotient, I have to do 5 plus 1, and that is 6. And then I do have a remainder here. We have a remainder of 4. So that's 6, remainder 4. Okay, all right, let's do number 7. This one's going to be a little bit of a bigger one, okay? And we're going to do 98 divided by... 2. So you should already know 2 is going to go into 98 many, 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 many times, right? Because 2 was a small number and 98 is such a big number. So we should have a pretty, you know, big number as our answer here. Uh, now, since 98 is an even number and when we count by twos, we only say even numbers, then we should not have a remainder here. 98 is a multiple of 2. We just need to know what multiple is it. Like, how many times do we count by twos before we actually get to 98? Uh, so let's go ahead and set this up here. I hope I have enough room for this one. I hope so. All right, so two, big seven, and then 98. Um, so let's see, how could we break this one down? I'm thinking maybe two times 40. What do you think about that? Trying to get to 98. 2 times 40. I think we did this one earlier for another problem. Uh, so we know 2 times 4 is 8. That means 2 times 40 is 80. Well, hey, looky there. We're going to get this pretty small, right? So 98 minus 80, well, that's going to be 18. And then I do know 2 times what number equals 18? That's 2 times 9, which equals 18. And 18 minus 18 is zero. So we're done. Look at that. So it actually wasn't as bad as I thought, right? So these right here are your partial quotients, 40 and 9. To get the full quotient, we have to do 40 plus 9, and that gives us 49. So our answer to 98 divided by 2 is 49. Okay? All right, guys, so we're going to keep going here. You're doing great. I know this has been a long math lesson, but guys, it, it had to happen, okay? Had to happen. All right, so let's keep going here. Number eight. All right, so beware. We're going to start getting into some pretty, pretty big numbers here, okay? But this is why I'm doing it with you. All right, so let's do number eight. So this time, let's do 937 divided by five. Guys, nothing has changed. Even though this is now a bigger number, we're into a three-digit number now, nothing has changed, okay? We're going to keep doing exactly what we've been doing. So skip down a couple lines. And let's go ahead and set this up. So 5, big 7, 900. 
37. So we want to know how many times is 5 going to go into the number 937. So we're going to break down 937 into multiples of 5. So 5 times what number is going to get you close to 937? Keep it easy. I cannot stress that enough. Keep it easy. I'm not going to sit here and try to figure out what's 5 times 46. What's 5 times 39? What's 5 times 82? No, just keep it simple. I know a very easy fact that I can do. 5 times 100, right? 5 times 100, that's an easy one that we all know. And 5 times 100 is 500. So we'll subtract 500. Okay, so we've already broken this down pretty small. So 7 minus 0 is 7, 3 minus 0 is 3, 9 minus 5 is 4, so now that gives us 437. So now let's see, can we do 5 times 100 again? No, because that's 500 and this is 437. So we can't do 5 times 100, but we can go smaller than 100. Uh, like maybe, let's do... Five times um, 50. What about that one? Five times 50. So I know five times five is 25, and there's one zero here. So five times 50 is 250. So let's do that. So when you get to these bigger numbers, you're going to have to use some of those um, zeros tricks that we learned whenever we were doing our multiplication box method. Okay. All right. So now we're going to subtract seven minus zero is 7, can't do 3 minus 5, so that 4 becomes a 3, this 3 becomes a 13, and now we can subtract here. Can you see that? I'm going to zoom in for you. So we're just doing some regrouping here with subtraction, right? So the 3 becomes a 13, the 4 becomes a 3, now we can subtract. 13 minus 5 is 8, 3 minus 2 is 1, so that gives us 187. Okay, I'm going to zoom back out now. All right, that gives us 187. All right, so we're getting better here. Uh, the smaller that number gets, the easier this is going to be for you guys. Uh, so now, let's see, 5 times what number will get me close to 187? Well, that would definitely be 5 times 20, right? Because if 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 20 is 100. So we're going to do 187 minus 100, and that's 87. So see, we're getting smaller here. We're, we're working our way down smaller, okay? Now, 5 times what number will get us close to 87? I would keep it simple and just do something like 5 times 10. So 5 times 10 is 50. So we're going to subtract 50 from 87, and that gives us... 37. So, hey, we're making it real small now. And then five times what number will get you close to 37? That would definitely be five times seven because five times seven is 35. And then 37 minus 35 is two. And five cannot go into the number two. There's nothing I can do. There's no five times something that's going to get us close to the number two. We're done here, okay? So you can see this is a much bigger problem, and that's okay, okay? It's okay. You just have to take your time and use multiplication facts you already know, okay? So all of these numbers here, these are your partial quotients. 100, 50, 20, 10, and 7. I'm sure many of you can add those numbers in your head, but if you can't, all you have to do is come over here and write it down. 100 plus 50 plus 20 plus 10 plus 7, and that will give us 5, 6, 7, 8, 1. That gives us 187. So those numbers we underlined here, those are your partial quotients. Those are the numbers you're going to add together. That's 100. 87. So that's your quotient. That's your final answer. 187. Okay. All right. Hopefully you're starting to feel a little bit better about this. All right. So let's do number nine. Number nine. This is 622 divided by nine. 622 divided by nine. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and set this one up. Skip down a couple lines. So 9, big 7, 
622. All right, so we're going to try to break down 622 using multiples of 9. So using our multiplication facts, 9 times what number will get us close to 622? Well, I know that 9 times 6 is 54, but again, we're in the hundreds here, so I need to go bigger than that. So how about we do 9 times 60? So if 9 times 6 is 54, 9 times 60, add 1 zero, is 540. And 540 is pretty close to 622. So we're doing good here. So now we're going to subtract. 2 minus 0 is 2. And then I'm going to do 62 minus 54 here to keep from having to regroup. So 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62. That gives me 8. So this is 82. And hey, look at that. We broke this down a lot, right? So now it should be pretty easy to figure out, you know, 9 times what number is going to get you close to 82. That would definitely be 9 times 9. And let's say you didn't do no 9 times 9. You could have done 9 times 5. You know, you're just going to have to do a little bit more work here. But if you know your multiplication facts, then you can make this pretty easy on yourself. Uh, so if 9 times 9, we know is 81. 82 minus 81 is 1. And then 9 cannot go into the number 1. So here are your partial quotients, 60 and 9. And to get our final answer, we just add 60 plus 9, and of course that equals 69. And do not forget, we do have a remainder here. We have a remainder of 1. So our final answer is 69 remainder 1. Okay, all right, let's keep going here. I've got us planned out to do 12 problems, so we just got about three more that we're going to do, okay? All right, so there's number nine. Let's keep going here. Uh, so number 10, that's going to be 689 divided by 5. 689, sorry, 689 divided by 5, okay? All right, so skip down a couple lines. Let's go ahead and get that set up here. So 5, Big 7 and 689. All right, so same thing. We're trying to break down uh, 689 using multiples of 5. So 5 times what number will get you close to 689? I would start with the easiest one of them all. 5 times 100 because we know that's 500. And that's going to leave us with 189. So see, the smaller you can get that number down, the easier it's going to be here, okay? All right, so now five times what number will get you to 189? Um, let's see, maybe let's do five times, what's five times 20? Let's try that. Five times 20, five times, listen to me, I can't even talk now. Five times 20, uh, five times two is 10, so five times 20 is 100, so yeah, we can do that. So let's do that. 5 times 20 is 100, so 189 minus 100, that leaves us with 89, and then 5 times what number will get us close to 89? Uh, help me out here, that would be 5 times, what are you thinking? We could always do 5 times 10, that's a pretty easy one to do, 5 times 10, let's just do that, 5 times 10, and then we will subtract 50, so that leaves us with 39. Hey, that worked out good, didn't it? And then to get from five or to get to 39, five times what number will get you close to 39? We should definitely do five times seven because five times seven is 35 and we can't get any closer than that because five times eight is 40 and we would have went over 39. Uh, so 39 minus 35 is four and then four is smaller than five. So we can't multiply five by something to get close to four. So that's how we know we're done. And here we have our partial quotients, 100, 20, 10, and seven. So to get our final quotient, we just add them all together. 100, 20, 10, and seven. And of course that's gonna give us 137. So we're gonna plug that in up here where our answer goes. 137, and then we will have a remainder of four. Do not forget that remainder. A lot of people do. 137, remainder four. Okay. 
All right, and then let's go ahead and once we've got that one down, skip a line here and let's do number 11. Okay, all right, and for number 11, let's see. All right, so we will do, uh, for number 11, let's do 476 divided by five. Okay, 476 divided by five. All right, so let's go ahead and skip down a couple lines and let's set that up. So we'll do five, big seven, 476. Okay, so just like we've been doing, we're gonna break down 476 uh, using multiples of five. So we wanna know five times what number is gonna get us really close to 476. Normally, I would recommend that we do five times 100, but it's 500, and that's bigger than 476. So we have to go smaller than five times 100. So maybe let's do uh, five times 80. Let's try that one. Uh, so we know five times eight is 40, so if we add a zero, five times eight is 400. And that's going to get us very close to 476. And then that's also a pretty easy multiplication fact that you're doing in your head. So if we do 476 minus 400, that gives us 76. So now we want to know five times what number, <clears throat> excuse me, is going to get us close to 76. So I would just keep it simple here and do something like five times 10. So five times 10, we know that's 50. 50 minus 76 is 26, and then from here, we know that we should do 5 times 25, or not 5 times 25, I'm crazy, 5 times 5, because 5 times 5 is 25, and 26 minus 25 is 1. So then that gives us all of our partial products. So we've got 80 or partial quotients. I'm sorry, I'm losing my mind here. These are our partial quotients. So we've got 80, 10, and 5. Those are all of our partial quotients. So then to get the final answer, we would just do 80 plus 10 plus 5. And that, of course, is going to equal 95. So we have a quotient of 95. Don't forget your remainder. We have one left over. So 95 remainder one. Okay, 95 remainder one. All right, so we're going to do one more problem together, and then you guys can go to your student assignment chart and see what you need to do after this. All right, so let's do together number 12. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's do 943 divided by 6. 943 divided by 6. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that up. So skip down a couple lines. 6, big 7, 943. So again, we want to break down our total, which is 943. We want to break it down to as small as we possibly can using those multiples of 6. So 6 times what number will get us close to 900? So I would start with something simple like not or six times 100 and six times 100 is 600. So we'll do 943 minus 600 and that's going to give us 343. So we can't do six times 100 again because that's going to be way too big. So now we have to think six times what number will get us really close to 343. So again, I would just do some very simple facts here, and I would probably do 6 times 50. 6 times 50, because uh, we know 6 times 50 is 300. So I would do 343 minus 300. That gives us 43. And see, now that we've got this broken down pretty small, it's going to start to get really easy now to kind of wrap up this problem. Uh, so 6 times what number will get you close to 43? That's definitely going to be 6 times 7 because 6 times 7 is 42. So then we'll do 43 minus 42, and that equals 1. And then we know that we're done because 6 cannot be divided into 1. 6 times a number is not going to get you close to 1, so we're done. So these are going to be the partial quotients. 100, 50, 
and 7. And then when you add those three partial quotients together, you get the final quotient, which of course is 157 with a remainder of 1. So 157 with the remainder of one. Okay, guys, I know that was a lot of information today. I get it. Uh, and when I see you this afternoon, we're definitely going to practice more of these questions together. And that's where if you have any questions or if you're confused about anything, uh, let me know and we can work through that together. Uh, but head over to your student assignment chart and see what else you need to get done today. Okay. All right, guys, good job. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you guys this afternoon. Okay.